Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I wish to thank um, honorable members for their support. But, Mr. Speaker, I think it's incumbent uh, upon me to just respond very quickly. The member for Chozelle indicated that there seemed to be a problem with people not receiving service if they have not paid. I, I, I know that the hospital is trying very hard, Mr. Speaker, to recover some, of, some funds, and I am not aware, I'm not aware of anyone being turned away, especially in, in emergency cases. I know that the hospital deals with all emergency cases, and I am aware that the hospital is trying very hard to, to make arrangements, payment plans, and so on with people. Um, but I will, I will still find out, based on what the member said, the whole issue of getting death certificates, I will, I, will, I will pursue that also, but I'm not aware of this situation. I know there have been one or two complaints from some people who have access health care services in, in certain institutions here in St. Lucia in relation to the death certificates, but we have investigated and we have resolved those matters. I believe also, Mr. Speaker, that um, the, the, the member for Miku South and leader of the opposition spoke to the whole issue of the amount of money. How are we going to finance health care? That $19 million to St. Jude Hospital obviously is a drop in the bucket, and I agree. This government agrees that we need to increase resources say that based on the evidence, based on the information which has come to me, there is also a role for, for management and proper management and responsible management, Mr. Speaker. And we are trying very hard both at the Millennium Heights Medical Complex at the level of the board. We have a new CEO now in the person of Dr. Dexter James. And um, we are trying very hard to, to work out the, the management issues and to become very efficient. I know the St. Jude board is, is doing the same and they have presented their plans and so on, so, so that is working. Let me just answer finally the member for Miku South who spoke about a funding mechanism. He said we call ours universal health care. He calls his health insurance. Well, what, what I can say to the, to the member for Miku South is this government is working diligently with the professionals to ensure that we, we present to the people of St. Lucia a plan for the funding of health care. I can tell you that we are advanced in our discussions. I can also tell you that the, the Minister for Finance and Prime Minister is at the heart of, of these discussions and we are going to also benefit from the World Bank project. The, there's an ongoing project which deals with financing of healthcare. It is difficult, it is challenging. All governments have faced this challenge. How are we going to finance healthcare? How are we going to do it? PAHO, WHO, recommends, Mr. Speaker, that at least we should have 6.6% of our GDP going to financing healthcare. I think we are about 4 point something percent at this stage. So there is a gap, a financing gap for healthcare. But we must also accept that to, to close that financing gap, the, the, the Department of Health, the, the, health se the healthcare sector in general, must come together with a credible way forward, a credible plan which can be presented to Parliament, presented to honorable members, presented to the cabinet, so that we can know exactly where the money is going to, exactly what we are funding, and how we are funding healthcare moving forward. But there are other things which must be done. The member spoke about health insurance, and he tries to, to say there's a difference between health insurance and the Labour Party is talking about universal health care. In all of the literature, Mr. Speaker, it is universal health we are talking about. You can fund universal health via an insurance mechanism, but the, the goal is universal health care. That is the goal. One Health, using One Health as the, as the broader environment, where you have animal health, our health, the environment, and so on, but the goal is universal health care. And we, we ought not to wait for the financing mechanism to begin the process of implementing universal health care. I have said before, Mr. Speaker, that what I'm trying to propose 
And what we are working on as a ministry is to demystify what universal health care is. First of all, it is access. You need to provide greater access to people. Greater access to quality health care. And you need, to, you need to do it in a way, you need to do it in a way which reduces out-of-pocket costs and you, you need to have equity. So as a ministry, just to respond to the member from Eco South, we are working very hard to increase access. So that is why we are doing centers of excellence. At the Minku Center of Excellence for NCDs, you can go and find out from the, from the nurses and the administrators. We have increased access to specialist services at Miku. We have increased access. So we are already working on implementing universal health care. And um, we will present the other plans very soon. So I'm, I, I, and I, I agree with the member for, for Viewfort South, obviously, that we are trying very hard to stick to the Public Finance Management Act, and we are hoping that this amendment will satisfy that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.